I'm really excited that NOAA's bringing the ship back into the Pacific. The Pacific is huge. Launching D2. Even though we spent three years going all around the Pacific, that still means that we just scratched the surface. It's like you have to wash your car, and all we did is we washed one headlight so far. That's it. We gotta get to the rest of the car. We've gotta get some more. What brought us to the Pacific originally back in 2015 was a foundation of information that was missing. And we were working under a campaign called Capstone. Capstone stands for the Campaign to Address Pacific Monument Science, Technology, and Ocean Needs. We were asked to come into the area in order to help expand the exploration footprint. Many people, when they hear the term monument, think of things like Mount Rushmore but there are also monuments in the ocean that are called marine monuments. And these are areas that are particularly important to try to preserve. We had no idea what animals were living at these depths in these different parts of the Pacific. There were so many firsts for all of us, and with the amazing cameras that the Okeanos Explorer has on a D2, you can zoom in and see things that you, we'd never seen before, just some amazing animals. We're going to be right this front. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see it starting to re Yeah. The most memorable things for me there's this little bitty type of jellyfish that when we first saw it, it looked like it had been captured by a coral polyp. As it turns out, this tiny little jellyfish lands on the coral and starts eating the polyp. It's not the other way around, which is what? <laughs> it was really extraordinary. For us, when we're able to be there with the remotely operated vehicles and in situ just passively observe them, it's a really great opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about what their day-to-day -day life looks like. How do they interact with the environment around them? How do they interact with the other animals around them? I love that we get the opportunity to do that because frequently we find out that there are things beyond what we expected down there, which is really exciting. Pilot drive aft and center line. Copy, driving aft and center line. Every dive, every time that we're mapping an area, we're gaining new knowledge. The maps are helping us understand what the seafloor looks like as we try to build a global map of the seafloor. And then we can start building the picture of what the ecosystem looks like. A lot of the ecosystems are driven and controlled by the geologic factors. So you have to understand what the geology looks like in order to place in context those ecosystems that you're looking for. 70% of our planet is water. Specifically, most of it is deep sea. And yet we know almost next to nothing about what's going on in the deep sea. The way I sort of like to put it is, if you don't know anything about the deep sea, you don't know a whole lot about the planet that you're living on. The deep sea is very likely playing an absolutely crucial role to the planet's health. But we don't know that because we haven't been down there enough. And then now in particular, the protection that the deep sea has always had for disappearing because our technology is developing to the point where commercial exploitation is becoming possible. So it's a race, but in this particular case, we have a chance to understand what the impacts might be on these deep sea environments before exploitation actually begins. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important to learn what's down there and understand what's going on.